Hi, I was responding to uh, some of Charles Dance's uh, comments um, that he uh, that he made that that he added detail to on my open beta thing. Um, so I, uh, I I want to one I want to take some of the things into account. I also want to explain a little bit about how software development works. It seems like Charles Nance, you might know something about uh, web design or have opinions, but I have a feeling you haven't worked with people that were actually developing a server um, while you did it. Um, right now, if I was working with a professional web designer on this, um, he would be working on his own thing probably. He'd be working on the templates because I wouldn't want to fuck with his stupid superficial templates while I was trying to get the player to seek to the right time and see I'm I'm making the server in Python. There's an interface you haven't seen which is designed to look better uh, or not look better but to, to it's, it's like a Google app type you know Google Docs JavaScript thing. And I'm not even using because you can't really embed the player properly. So I've got just direct JavaScript on there. And I'm working on the software. I can't be bothered about a font. If it's Comic Sans, it's because I wanted to change it. And I went to Web Safe Fonts and I chose one that looked better than the default one. Yeah, it's noisy. Now, my taste is also goes to the noisy side, but this isn't an example of my taste directly it is it is evolved into a minimalism I can accept but it's not like I'm doing web design on this I'm working on software and the web design would have to come a bit later now if people if I had a web designer I need to get one actually I was just um, talking about that but you know uh, it's going to be hard because a regular web designer uh, does not know how to work with a software engineer. You know, they think things like, it's broken, why? Because the padding's off. Okay, um, so let's just go through the comments. I'll try to answer them. Both about development and, and about what is really going to happen in that regard. Okay, you're not going to change... You're not going to change the fact that it looks like ass. Okay, that wasn't fair. I apologize. I just mean it doesn't look very nice. There's a blank, there's blank black text everywhere that isn't formatted into any kind of aesthetically pleasing order. I don't really get the blank black. I mean, it's in a utilitarian mode. I played around with giving a color, but you have to color coordinate. So black and white, I don't. So it's actually better now for my purposes. But I don't know what you mean, blank black, exactly. Um, it is unwelcoming. See, this is why it's a control, why I'm looking for... I didn't want to call it a closed beta, because that sounded too limiting. But it is a closed beta. This is That's why I was saying I want people who would find such a tool useful because it's not for people that want to go have an aesthetically pleasing artistic experience. I'm collecting feedback for that. Um, it's easy to do things like add themes and use CSS later, or maybe not actually because I've done some hard-coded uh, formatting, but it'll be easy to, like a day, to extricate that stuff. That's easy code to change. This thing could be changed how it looks. What's important to me now is how it works. So it is unwelcoming at the moment. It is a tool in development. I, I don't know what to tell you. It's um, totally ready to be to to start having users, not customers, not people that are going to go. I would use it, but I don't like that font. It's not for people that would be turned off by the font. Right now, it would be most useful to get testers that might actually just want to use the tool because it can do something. 
The, some of this I've answered in text, I just got tired of answering. So why is the YouTube video ID text there? Well, I had some other stuff up there that I've already moved away that's down at the bottom of the form, so I'd still have access to it, but I want to move it out of the space because I'm not really worrying about the look, but I am worrying about where the things are, how far you have to move your mouse to click this, and oh, I want to pause the video after I've done things that make my mouse be up here. Okay so where the controls are now the YouTube video ID text it's it's there for engineering purposes right now because it's very useful for me I mean I clear my database it's easy for me to go cut and paste that or this form is complicated there's various components of it and I need to know you know I'm watching the server and it shows the YouTube ID I want to make sure it didn't get confused and send me the wrong one and so I can compare right there without searching the text for hidden controls and stuff okay but I think I might leave it because I think uh, you know in my tools the, the other parts of this that are going to come along they can use the video ID um, people use video IDs to communicate with each other all the time you can't put the whole URL so you know I don't know I think the YouTube video ID might be uh, interesting you probably didn't notice there's a video note ID up there as well and that's really useless who wants to know that their video note database ID record number is 9342 well I have to right now I'll take it away later but you know and I can also put those things in hidden controls and in comments that I can look at the source when in deployment I'll go ahead and make it so I can look at those things but it'll be a little bit more difficult and when it comes back into development uh, we'll probably be putting some of that stuff right up there. In development, if I can save myself, you know, three minutes every time uh, some common occurrence happens, I, you know, I, I get those back as hours. Um, there is a baseball bat. Okay, the title of video time code tool in haggard writing with black border and some kind of baseball bat at the side and a bunch of numbers underneath so I know where I am in time and space. Well, I don't know what you mean haggard. Don't I just have the title in default and my default font? I would like a haggard looking font. That would be totally my style if I could have a torn and shredded font. The, um, yeah. The baseball bat, well, that's programmer art. You know, people never like programmer art, but they also don't like baseball bats with the letter phi on them. Uh, that's too bad. I like the baseball bat. We're just going to, if I replace that, it'll be with just a, a better one. Um, two, why is there Comic Sans there, too? I forget because, but I think I just needed it to stand out from the other text. See, I don't care that it stands out well. I just. I'm working at a level of interface concern here, and I've worked in the game industry, web industry, I've lots of utilitarian areas that where the tools don't have to look pretty. I know something about interface development. And one thing I know is that if I made interfaces just to suit me, they wouldn't necessarily suit other people. So, you know, I understand there's a divergence at a certain point where what I would prefer is really just kind of like an engineering preference. So like, this is an example where I'll often see in an interface like this, when I'm trying to break it in basically, um, I don't care what the font looks like. I don't, and I'm not trying to make it look nicer. I'm trying to make it more uh, spatially functional. Like if, if something is Comic Sans, it stands out. And other information then is inset and stands out or in, in proportion. So I forget why I did that, but it's totally random. I just go, I say, I want that to have a different font. I go to the web save fonts and I get a different one. Why? Because I could spend days and days overthinking it like a web designer, but I don't have time. When do I get the programming done? And once I get the programming done, web designers are easy and there's lots of them that could work with it. There's few web designers, though, that know how to work with something under development because web designers put tons of time and they're the kind of people who might have to do weird little tags if just to just get something working. And if the server 
system and the JavaScript system changes under it, all that kind of fragile work can be broken. So you just need to bring that kind of web designer in when the code and interface tools underneath that they're going to be embedding and using are stable enough. So, uh, yeah. But again, as I was saying, even if I was doing this, um, you know, as part of a fully funded professional thing, there would be web designers in on it already. I'd probably be using a little bit, you know, maybe a color code. They would have given me some some art, you know, like instead of the bat, it's a club. But um, but I still wouldn't be using the thing they were developing day to day because they'd have all these bells and whistles, and I'm like, I don't need a JavaScript GUI zoom in thing to control the volume of the sound. That's that just makes it harder to debug. So yeah. So it's a little bit too early for a lot of this stuff you're worrying about. Um, the bottom part with the annotation notes is good, and also the comments with the order thing is good. But still not everything is clear to me as a guy who isn't investing much time in it, but perhaps more than someone who gets linked to it. There's a learning curve, and there shouldn't be, oh yes. Well, you know what, that's bullshit, Charles. Okay, I don't believe that. You know, this is like, no, no, no. The, the web is not... See, people think that, I call it Krillonomics, it's because you collect all these little tiny particles when you're just the web page out there with standard trying to, you, you got your net and you can do pretty good if you get enough. So you want to keep people at your site and that's the whole thing It's evolved for it as, as an industry. But as an art form, as, a, as an engineering form, you're trying to get things done. You have a tool that can do something. Okay, now... I like to make tools that can do something and I want the interface to make it efficient. I want if you're using the interface it to go quicker. Then after that there's aesthetically pleasing but I've done a lot of, of work with professionals doing that side and you can't please everybody which is why we have CSS and ways of, of profiling and um, putting up um, you know, account, uh, having accounts where you associate a, your own look and feel with with some web intersite, which takes intersite, which takes, you know, uh, a lot of resources because that artwork is, it takes a long time to do those details. Um, so there is going to be a learning curve. I just want to make a tool where if you understand what you what the tool wants like for people that understand yeah I, it'll help me save me time playing a video back that I wanted to review the highlights of that kind of person should be able to get in step by step without it being painful and then once they understand the tool they should be, it should be feel easy to use and like when they do something they know it's going to happen okay. so there will be a learning curve um, yeah, there should be. No, I don't make software that is a better color choices on something you've already done. I, I only make software that does something that hasn't been done yet. Okay, that's not literally true with every line of code I've written. I've had to reproduce a lot of things, but the project goals. I'm interested in things that aren't out there. I'm not a reinvented here. If somebody else had this tool, I wouldn't be doing it because I could make the, the font better. Okay. Um, name or something. Can I share these notes? Are they public? Are they private? Oh, wait, do I have an account? Are the videos and notes stored in my account? Well, I think I mentioned, didn't I? Um, anyway, no, there's no user accounts. I haven't turned them on, and the reason was is because I wanted to... Um, I was thinking I would go into the close, but it's really easy to turn on, to turn that on because with you with Google accounts, and I already have it in my code, and I've used it a bunch of, for over a year. I know how to use it. It's, it's easy. But I wanted people to be able to share notes, so I thought I would go into close beta without the user accounts turned on, um, because if people log in. There's a lot of logic there to make it so that they can. It's easy to make the video, the private or public, the note sets, but it's not so easy to. Uh, is this recording? Is it going to stop at 15 minutes? 
or do I with my bigger upload time? 